Hey there, Nick Juntakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to convert a Google account from using less secure apps to using two-factor authentication along with application passwords. And this is going to be a very important switch because as of May 30th, 2022, Google is no longer going to support being able to enable less secure apps. This is something you may have enabled in the past because it allowed you to log in directly to your Gmail account using uh, whatever third-party applications that you have. In this case, potentially a web application logging over SMTP to send out emails. For example, this is the Snake Eyes application that we build in the Build a SaaS app with Flask course. And in that course, I suggested in development, you might want to just log into your Gmail account and send emails out there just in development, right? Just to get an idea of what these emails look like for real when they're being sent out. And if you enable less secure apps, you can just log in with your Gmail username and password. Everything is good to go, but that's no longer going to work. Instead, we're going to have to create an application password. And this is not limited to Flask, right? This applies to any web framework. Uh, it's all just locking over SMTP to your email provider. And this video, yeah, there's going to be three things that we're going to cover, which is one, how to enable two-factor authentication on a Google account. Two, how to create an application password. And three, how to log in over SMT, SMTP to a Gmail account using that application password. From a code perspective change on the Build a SaaS Apple Flask course, really nothing is going to change at all. We'll just be uh, logging in with the application password instead of our regular password. That's gonna be changing one value in an ENV file. So code-wise change, very, very simple. But uh, what's interesting here is I do have a secondary Gmail account that I don't really log in as, you know, I don't wanna say it's a throwaway account, but you you know, it was created well before Google required linking up phones. So I do not have 2FA hooked up to this account, but I do have 2FA hooked up into my real account. So this is all going to be really new to me. I've actually never created an application password with Gmail before because in production, typically, you know, you wouldn't be using Gmail to send emails out for a real web application. You do some dedicated transactional email service, right? Like SendGrid or Postmark, Mailgun, et cetera, whole bunch, whole bunch of different options there. You can technically use them in development too, if you'd like. But uh, yeah, in this video, this is going to be a live video of me just stumbling through how to do this. So let's get rolling here. So, and by the way, all the links that we see in this video, I will link them in the description. But I guess this all starts here with uh, just reading this page here. We're not gonna like read every word for word for word, but yeah, basically less secure apps are going away. We're gonna need to do something. I did glance this page a little bit uh, beforehand, but you know, the way to fix this here is to say that uh, we need to use an application password. And uh, yeah, we can basically click this link here, which is gonna lead, I guess, to potentially how to create the application password. But we are not at this step yet because we do need to enable two-factor authentication first because we can see here that uh, that's just a requirement here. And this application password, by the way, yeah, 16 digit passcode, blah, 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 blah. We'll get here when we get here. So let me just start, I guess, by opening up this one maybe. And then, uh, okay, so open Google account in navigation security. Okay, so I'm gonna go and open up my Google account here in a new window. And then, um, yeah, I guess we don't need to go anywhere because it does say turn on uh, two-step verification here. That's basically two-factor authentication. And we can see here too, that's the same wording here, two-step verification here. And uh, I guess theoretically, we could enable 2FA in many different ways. So we can either, uh, well, I guess let's go to count me in or whatever that happens to be uh, later here. But also maybe I need to zoom in a little bit here. Let's see, protect your, I was gonna say like you could use, I guess like the Google Authenticator app on a mobile phone where you can hook up a phone number potentially maybe and get a text message. I don't know how it is going to work here, uh, but we'll see. So let's go get started here. And then uh, we need to add my password, okay. Uh, I just happen to have uh, pass, which is a command line tool that I use here to manage all my passwords. I have a blog post about that one. Uh, I'll link to that one in the description because I don't think I made a video about that one. But I'm going to go and log in here. No, I don't want to save that. Thank you. And here we need to set up a phone number. Now, I do have a phone number hooked up to my real Gmail account. And I don't think it's going to let me hook up two different phone numbers to or yeah, the same phone number to two different emails. And if you don't happen to have a mobile phone or a phone number that can accept a text message, what you could do is uh, hook things up to a Google Voice number. And this Google Voice number that I have, uh, I had this for you know many, many, many years. Of course, I'm gonna have to blank things out here, contact information, et cetera, including phone number. But yeah, this Google Voice number is something you can create. I think if you just Google for literally like Google Voice, you can get a phone number in really honestly a couple of minutes and it's completely free. I don't know if that works around the world, but uh, you know, let's be real here. Ch chances are uh, you do have a mobile phone already wherever you live, capable of accepting text messages or capable of using some type of authenticator application here. But uh, 
yeah, in this case, I'm going to go with the text message approach. Honestly, on the main account that I have, I do have things hooked up to Google Authenticator. But uh, yeah, let me paste in that phone number there. And uh, we will do this through a text message. Let's just see what some options are. Yeah, nothing too important there. So the next one there is, I guess it is going to now send a text message over to the Google Voice number or whatever phone number that you put in here. And we just need to put in the code. So if I go back to here, let's see if we get a new text message, which we did. And uh, there is that verification number. Again, I'm just blanking this whole screen because uh, this is going to be easier. But yes, you'll get a, a text message from Google saying like, here's your Google verification code. So I just copied that to the clipboard. I pasted it in here just so you can see how it's formatted. I don't think there's any harm in really sharing that number there because that uh, is probably going to expire, I guess, just after I used it. So great. It looks like now we have 2FA enabled or two-step verification enabled for this Gmail account. Uh, well, technically, I guess we need to actually turn it on. So there we turned it on. Uh, let's see, available second steps after entering your password verifies, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So we verified that phone number there for the Google uh, voice number. Now let's add some more secondary steps here to see it's verified. Uh, backup codes, uh, yeah. I mean, if, if you're really setting up 2FA for the very first time, you'll absolutely want to go through this process. Well, I have to put in my password again, okay. And this thing just copies things to my clipboard for 45 seconds and then gets rid of them. But uh, let's see what happens here. No, don't want to save that. Um, I'm actually not going to click the backup codes. I mean, let's see what happens. Okay, fine. Probably just going to, oh, there they are. Okay, cool. Yeah, these probably, yeah, I'm going to be uh, blanking those out. Thank you very much. But this is uh, a list of backup codes in case you happen to lose your device. Uh, it's a really good idea to have these, like really put these in a safe spot, really back them up to somewhere that folks are not going to be able to see that because it's going to be very important. But uh, yeah, let's go back here from backup codes and see if there's anything else that's interesting. Yeah, you can also hook up a Google Authenticator here. I guess technically that's uh, an additional step that you can take here. And yeah, I think that's probably going to be good here. If we go back to my account, uh, I think yeah, we're protected by 2FA now. Awesome. So that's step one of the video. Wasn't too painful. And step two of this video now is going to be going back to uh, signing in with application passwords, meaning we're, we're going to need to actually create an application password. So let's see. App passwords aren't recommended or uh, um, okay. Yeah. So this is if you weren't logging in over SMTP. I mean, really, this is like the only way you could potentially do that as far as I know, especially using the Flask application. But uh, yeah, let's go and generate one of these passwords here. So when to use that passwords, right? We want to sign in to Google. Okay, so what do we do? One, we go to our Google account and then we select security. So let's open up that up into a new tab and then go to security. We'll just follow these steps exactly how they are here. Under signing in, under signing into Google. Okay, is there anything around signing into Google here? Okay, they're signing into Google. It says select app passwords. Okay, let's go and find app passwords. Okay, cool. There, you know, there it is. I'm not going to click it just yet. Uh, you mean to sign in if you don't? Okay. Yep, it's saying that we need to enable 2FA there if we don't have it. Uh, okay, so what do we need to do here? Well, actually, it says if you don't have this option, it might be because A, B, C, or D. I mean, that statement says that, honestly, we don't even need to read the rest of these because we have that thing available to us. So we can jump straight to step four here. Um, okay, at the bottom, choose select app and then choose the app you're using. Well, at the what bottom? I mean, I, I, mean, I guess we just click into that probably. Okay, ask for my password again, thanks. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, actually, I think this is my fault. I may have cookies and everything disabled completely for Firefox here, just so I don't save any history for videos and stuff like that. So that actually makes sense here. Um, okay. Now let's see where we're at here. At the bottom, it says, well, under step four, choose select app and choose the app you are using. So select app. Um, yeah, we're going to be using mail because we're going to be logging over SMTP. And then what does it say here for device? Okay, let's see what the device would be. I mean, it's not really a device here. I don't know, maybe if this is just a label here, we can just be like um, like web app in development, like web app in development. Now, I mean, depending on how many application passwords you want to generate, you may want to generate multiple different application passwords for all the projects that you have. For example, you know, if you're working on three different client apps for, you know, various uh, contract work, you might want to make a different app password for each of them instead of just sharing the one. But in this case, let's just go with web app and development here and I'll just generate a new app password. And that is my app password here. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that the old school way with the right clicking instead of control seeing. 
uh, because I was scratching my knee with my left hand. So how to use it? Go to the settings for Google. I will, before we get there, let me just first uh, see what's going on here. I'll follow instructions in the uh, password screen. Okay, cool. First thing I'm gonna do though, actually I am going to jump over to uh, the source code here, open up a env file here and go to where the password should be. Uh, okay, there is the password there. Uh, depending on what you're doing, right? This is very super dependent on, use, on using Flask. I happen to be using Flask Mail as a library here, but uh, yeah, Flask Mailer, there's a whole bunch of different options, right? For Flask for sending emails out. But I've got these all extracted out to uh, environment variables. So in this case, the application password is the only environment variable I need to change here. You know, these things I don't need to worry about blurring, it's just local development stuff. Now, one thing that's really inter interesting that I didn't like was that, uh, yeah, it shows the password here with spaces, but there actually aren't spaces. So I'm guessing there really aren't spaces, but it's interesting that they show it with uh, instead of without. I understand like maybe it makes it easier to read, et cetera, but okay. Going back to here, it said basically read uh, all the other you know, instructions here. Cool, okay. So go to the settings for your Google account in the application or device you're trying to set up. Replace your password with the 16 character password shown above. I mean. I'm pretty sure that's literally what we just did. Like we just replaced the password with the 16 character password, okay? Just like your normal password, this app uh, grants complete access to your Google account. You won't need to remember it. So don't write it down or share it with anyone. Well, you won't need to remember it. Then how would I know to you? Okay, I'm guessing they're gonna give you a way to like see this later potentially, because in a lot of cases, you know how you've been to sites where it's like, hey, you're gonna be exposed to like a secret key, but you can only see it one time. You better go save it somewhere. So I don't know, we'll see, but we're done with that, I suppose. And now that's pretty neat that we can see when it was created. And I'm guessing when I actually log in and send an email, then it probably is going to show a last use there. But uh, well, I actually don't even see a way to see the, uh, yeah, I don't even see way to see the actual password if I wanted to get it back, but maybe that's somewhere else over here. So before we start experimenting, let's just see. So where was that under security? Um, uh, passwords, there we have one app password. Uh, okay, I'll log in again, no problem. Okay, then we will log in again. No, don't wanna save. Yeah, mm, that's interesting, okay. well. Let's just actually see if it works. Now, the first thing I need to do here is uh, restart the containers here because I changed an environment variable. This is just a standard thing. Uh, I happen to be using Docker for this project, but even if you weren't Docker, you would need to restart your process here just to pick up new environment variables. And now if I go to uh, this page over here, then everything is loaded. I just reloaded the page here. Let's just see uh, like what this, what this actually does. So hello world. Okay, this is totally normal. I have Flask debug toolbar hooked up to like intercept redirects, but cool. So like, thanks, expect a response shortly. And that, and that little screen that you saw is only happens in development. You can turn that off. That's like a Flask debug toolbar feature here. But technically now speaking, I should be able to go to my Gmail account for this account here and see that email that was sent. So let's go to Gmail. I should be auto logged in because single sign on, etc. Okay, definitely gonna have to blur that. And I definitely don't see anything. Uh, let me go to, well, let me go to updates here. Okay, I got one email from Google saying that uh, two-step verification was turned on. There was also a security alert here around, hey, an application is like trying to use your uh, account. That's totally fine. But there is a link here in one of these, which I will unblur, where it says basically, App password created, uh, check activity. Let's just see where that check activity uh, happens here. So now I, I guess I can say application, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, yes, I recognize that one. That's me, that's my device. Cool. So before you go, take security checkup. No, thank you. Uh, yeah, I guess it's gonna continue just putting me in this loop of like, yes, and then cancel, yes, and then cancel. But it's interesting that I didn't receive an email yet from that. Now, maybe I need to go and check what happened here. Uh, it actually looks like we got some serious errors here when trying to send the email. So what happened here? Authentication required. Learn more over here, blah, blah, blah. Is it trying to actually log in as dev at local.host instead of my Gmail account? That would be a little weird because I put my Gmail account in as the username, but, huh, that is interesting. Okay, let me just 
see something here real quick. I'm going to go build a SAS app with Flask at Gmail. Cool. And then we'll see if that works. There's that interrupt or intercept. Did we get the same error? Yeah, we do get the same error here. So there's not some like really, you know, weird, crazy bug in the code, which I know because this code has uh, been through the ringer many times here. But yeah, what is actually happening here? So it cannot send the email because of authentication required. So going back to here, did I not? Oh, <laughs> look at this guy forgetting to save files in Vim. Okay, let me uh, close this and then open it up again and restart it. Yeah, so just going back to here, I mean, you know, when I changed the file there, notice there is a little plus sign next to the file name, meaning it got changed. But then when I actually save the file, that plus sign goes away. So there was a plus sign before because I didn't save it. And before we didn't have anything there, it was a blank value. So it was like, hey man, like you need to authenticate. So yes, you need to put something there. Now, let me go back to here and then I'll just uh, once more and then send this out. Yes, okay. Thanks shortly. Now, do we actually get it? Hey, look at that. It immediately works. So there is the email sent from build us house Apple flask at Gmail because that is the username that I'm logging into over SMTP. And then we can see our message here. It's just a very basic contact form in the application. So how long was this video? Okay. It is about 16 minutes. Honestly, not too bad. So that is how to enable and start using application passwords with Gmail. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you ran into any issues there. And uh, I'll do my best to answer all of those questions there. I'm trying to think, like, is there anything else? It's actually super interesting that Google said, like, you know, you don't need to worry about remembering that application password because I do not see a way to recover that password here. And let's see, if I re if I reload the page, does it say last used? Yeah, that's actually kind of cool because, uh, and, you know, knowing that we get these stats back, I would for sure make a separate application password for every app that you have, even in development, because, I don't know, yeah, it's just uh, a good practice, right? You can just see... Uh, when they were last used. And if one gets compromised, you don't need to reroll all of them and change them in, in all those different apps. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess ignore what Google said about not having to remember that password because it's very important that you do because I don't see any other way to potentially get it back other than generating a completely new one and then deleting this one there to invalidate the old one. Uh, that would be something you may want to do. Actually, in that case, you know, I did show that password here. So I am going to delete that one because, yeah, I just don't want that to be uh, used by other folks on the internet. No offense. Um, but yeah, we can see here that that message went away already, but it said it's been revoked. So the revoked is a very important word there. So that is going to be it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.